and welcome to another episode of Lex Education, the comedy science podcast where comedian me, Laura Lex, tries to learn science from her nerdy younger brother, Ron. I don't like how the word nerdy has slipped into this intro every week. Hello, I'm Ron, by the way. No, it used to be just like, oh, he's just a normal guy. What an average Joe that isn't a comedian. And now I'm a, like some incel that's teaching you science. But nerds are cool nowadays. Yeah. Nerds are like, nerds are sexy Marvel guys. Those are nerds now. Yeah, I guess my culture did get appropriated. Yeah, you deserved it, though. How are you, Ron? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right. Uh, I have just been on a very long walk, training for another long walk. Why are you doing that? You hated the last one. I'm I di- shan't is- listen to your bitching this time. <laughs> this one is half the length of the other one. so it's Did not you enjoy bad. the first half of the last one? Yes, I did. Thank you. So this one is half the length and I'm very looking forward to it. Is this the one you're doing with mum? No, I'm not looking forward to that one. Are you mad? <laughs> <laughs> no, this one I'm doing with two friends. Um, shout out Hattie and Kirsty. Uh, happy birthday, Kirsty. Happy birthday, Kirsty. It is your birthday the day we're recording this. I know you listen, you cheekster. Happy birthday. Oh, let's do birthday shout outs, Ron. I just When did. we know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We need to know when the <laughs> listeners' birthdays <laughs> Email in with your birthday, and <laughs> if we're recording on that day, you'll get a delayed happy birthday later on. The Monday afterwards. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, it'd be like just like we're like CBBC when we were kids, you know, when they'd like show the cards off that some parents had sent in. Yeah. I'd love that. Anyway, um, <laughs> right. <laughs> Send in your finger paintings. <laughs> Except we both refuse to give you our addresses. Um, so this week's episode, we're back on the syllabus after the fun side stop we did in Halloween World. Thank oh you for no. all your. There's a diversion. <laughs> Thank you for all your love about Halloween week. We had a good time putting it together and uh, and we liked your feedback, so thank you very much. Um, I've been enjoying a lot of chit-chat this week. Sorry, Jasper, that we're ruining your degree prep. Um, but look, this is probably more important, so don't worry about it. And thank you, Kat, for the little sign... Um, you shared. You said, uh, saw this and thought of Laura not understanding science and Ron banging his head against the desk and trying to teach her. It says, did you do science day? A little flow chart. No, go do some science. Yes, was the science good? No. Oh, you deserve chocolate. Or yes, yeah, you deserve chocolate. <sighs> Either way, I get chocolate. Are you all right, Ron? Yeah. You haven't put in all the notes about the social stuff and I don't know what's happened. <laughs> well, maybe you could do the notes one week. But you just... <laughs> they're just there every week. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I do them. Um, it's been quite quiet. To be honest, we're recording this quite close to the release date, so not all the chitter chatters come in, really. So we'll probably just jump... Uh, into the episode Rolotovla quickly. Lots of nice... I mean, the bingo's going on. Bingo's was, popping. Um, Andrew thought uh, Halloween made you very mean, Ron. So just want you to know that uh, some people are on my side. I promise to you, every listener listening to this, Halloween didn't make me mean. It was the 20 episodes before it that made me mean. <laughs> <laughs> And there was also a lot of love for the little blooper reel that I put on the end of the episode. Um, I don't, did you listen to it, Ron? Um, I did after I saw some of the, the chat. Yeah, I didn't know that you were going to do that. <laughs> I, I, was, I was giddy. <laughs> you were giddy. I was just reading my Wikipedia entry. So thank you for your chat. You know we love it. We tell you every week how much we love it. Um, we're going to jump into... Ugh, it feels so boring to go back to chemistry after whatever it was we were studying, the little ants and stuff. But, um, hey, have a... Oh, this episode, for the first time ever, the the lack of effort in this episode comes from Ron rather than me. And um, I want you to know that it's a very different vibe you're about to walk into, uh, but do enjoy yourselves. 
Hi, Ron Bon. Ron Bon Jovi. My pub quiz name for a very long time was the Lemon Bon Ron. Um, oh, that's nice. What are you called Ron's Krispies on? Ron's Krispies is what well, I'm called on your, um, your PlayStation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm called Fatted Savings too. <laughs> Because I let the PlayStation choose a name on its own. And it chose Fatted Savings 2. If Fatted Savings 1 is out there listening, or just Fatted Savings, no number, hey, get in touch. I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, you might get a bunch of creeps messaging on PSN now. Oh, yeah, I didn't tell them where all the extra things are, though. What extra things? You know, there's extra little bit bots in there. Oh, yeah. Also, I don't know how to access messages <laughs> on the PSN. So send away, creeps. It'll make a nice change from Instagram DM. <laughs> <laughs> We're back into chemistry. It feels like a very long time since we, we recorded a chemistry episode. It's been a while. Um, it doesn't to me. It feels like I'm constantly sitting in this chair, <laughs> sweating, about to feel so stupid. Can you remember what we covered in the last chemistry episode? Uh, oh no, and I've just realised I've written physics at the top of the page because I wrote chemistry at the top of the last page, but then that actually turned out to be Halloween. You said that strangely. Um, what do you mean? Halloween. This is Halloween. That's like the way mum always says, new look. <laughs> mum always puts the emphasis on the second word. It drives me bananas. I'm going to get a hot dog. Hmm... Why do we go clothes shopping to new look? Ugh. Say new look, you idiot. Uh, we did. <laughs> oh, we did structures. You can tell you guys time. have seen each other recently. <laughs> <laughs> we, did, we did structures ionic lattices, small molecules, giant covalent structures, all that stuff. Yes, we did. Please tell me we're not doing a, any more of that, though. We are. Um, oh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, but we're 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 revisiting an old friend. We're um, like I'll level with you, Laura. Um, uh, we've got like just um, you know, like not enough at the end of a bit that we're gonna pad out into a full episode today. Um, so then we can move on to something else next chemistry episode. Okay. So does that mean this one's going to have a lot of stuff that's not actually in the syllabus, but it's just you talking about stuff you find interesting? No, because I didn't actually have time to do any extra research, so it's just going to be a very content-light episode. Okay. Do you want me to sing more? Sing away. I've I've got (laughs) visuals as well. I can't wait. Okay. Back to the podcast. See you in a second. Bye. Okay, so um, today we're going to specifically talk about the um, carbon and the different structures um, that are useful to learn about in terms of carbon. Carbonzo beans! What can you tell me about carbon, Laura? Carbon is the grandfather of everything. We are carbon. The table is carbon. Your mother is carbon. A tree is carbon. Carbon is the reason that none of us should reproduce. Carbon is the reason that all of us reproduced. Carbon um, makes... Carbon is... Carbon loves touching other carbons. And the bonds... Carbon has four... Carbons. 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 Carbon has... (laughs) (laughs) Do you know what? The weird thing is, I thought about having a snack before we did this, so I wasn't hungry and low blood sugar, and I didn't. But I seem to be hyper anyway. But I am going to crash at some point. That's fun. Carbon has four loosey-goosey sad boys. So it makes very stiff bonds because it's held on tight in four separate strands um so kind of um the the covalent bonds that carbon makes are the same as any other covalent bond yeah i know but it's uh, got four yeah, of them. yeah yeah exactly but yeah it does make four of them yeah yeah no I, ding ding yeah no i wasn't um um uh bashing you that's just um i was just uh clarifying so the first carbon thing that we're going to talk about, and I've heard you talk about this on another podcast, is diamond and the structure of diamond. 
and they last forever. Yes, they do because they're very, very strong. Now, if you could go to ye olde WhatsApp web. Already on it, mate. (laughs) (laughs) We haven't got the video on today because your internet's being sketchy, so I can piss about on the internet while you're talking. Fun, fun, fun. Um, I'm on the WhatsApp web. Can you look at the thing that I've just sent you? Ooh. Okay, I'm looking at sketchfab.com, and it's a diamond covalent network model. Yeah, so that is just a 3D model of diamond structure, because I thought if you could move around it, you'd get a good idea of sort of how it looks. Yeah, it, um... Oh, woo. You can spin it. Laura, it's an audio medium, could you? Yeah, but you've given me something that's distracting now, haven't you? Yeah. You silly goose. So the four covalent bonds that come off each carbon, they sort of make um, like a little pylon. So three come out the side in a triangle, um, if you know what I mean, like it would make a triangle, and then one sticks up out the roof yeah and then um the the model itself will post all of these on twitter or instagram or something it's just a small section of it um because obviously this it, it would sort of tessellate almost infinitely um in that structure I suppose it depends how big the diamond is though that might be just the whole thing if it was a very small diamond yep yeah i guess yeah um you wouldn't really be able to see that um, that would be diamond dust, I guess. And they called it the diamond dust. Anything else you want to say about this? Um, it's got some degrees written at the top. I don't know if they're important. Uh, so those are the, the angles that the, the bonds are at. Right. Um, uh, it goes up in a pyramid. Yeah. Would it have to go in a pyramid? Oh, you can zoom so far in. Oh, and the carbon looks like a tiny disco ball. What are the sticks actually made of in actual time? Well, those just represent the covalent bonds. Oh, so there aren't sticks. There aren't sticks, but there would be a pair of electrons that are getting shared in between each of those. I've zoomed super far away from it now, Ron. You can barely see it. Oh, wow. Who makes this website? Why would you make that ability? Um, It's uh, open source, so anyone can make it. People have too much time on their hands, don't they? Yeah, it says you talking about it on a podcast. Yeah, boy. (laughs) Ooh, I'm in a carbon. It looks a lot like the atomium for anyone that's been to Brussels. I have, and I don't know what you mean. Nah, the atomium's not not brill, to be honest. Quite quite a dull landmark. And you can see it from ages away, so there's very little point in going there. Some sort of church is losing its mind near you. Yeah, it's 5.02, special time in Brussels. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're a little bit late, so now they're trying to make up with it with gusto. So, Laura, knowing what you know about the structure of diamond, could you describe why it um, is so strong and has such a high melting temperature? Because you have to break or loosen four bonds in order to break it and those bonds are covalent which are the strongest type of bond exactly yeah so for each atom in the there, daniel craig have, of the situation yeah you have to break four of the strongest type of bond that we have why doesn't diamond conduct electricity um there's no loose electrons Exactly, yeah. All of the electrons are um, are held up in bonds or just in, in and around the, the carbon. Ah, it's all tied up in bonds, see? I haven't got access to any free electrons right now. Yeah, see? <laughs> Good addition. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and! <laughs> couldn't, couldn't think of anything to, to add there. <laughs> yeah. Harder than it looks, this comedy lark, see? <laughs> Not a professional, she. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, uh, that's throwing me off. Um, uh, yeah, that's that's diamond, isn't it? Uh, is there anything else you want to say about it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I used to have my car insurance with them. I don't think that had anything to do with the bonds, but it was fine. 
You sung that nice David Bowie song. Yeah. Diamond, Diamond Dogs. Dogs. It's a good one. Diamonds are forever. Yeah. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Diamonds on the soles of her shoes. Blood Diamonds. Yeah. Um, did Rihanna have a song with diamonds in it? Um, shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. Yeah. Um, Jimmy Diamond. Is that someone? Neil Diamond. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy Diamond. I'm no, Jimmy, Jimmy Diamond. Diamond she. Jimmy Diamond was someone from years and years. They did that diamond heist in the O2. I don't think it was called Jimmy Diamond. He started going by Jimmy Diamond down at the pub. Oh, That's one of the ways that they caught referencing him. Referencing my niche patrons only podcast with my other podcast. Ron. I'm a patron of the arts. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if you're listening, I do make my brother pay for extra content. <laughs> You're damn straight, I do. <laughs> and I'm a part of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Wrong I have to pay day. so I can listen, so I can do my bit on the next episode. <laughs> Let's get Duggan on this one. We'll get Duggan in. Yeah. To do detention well, corner he's, with Duggan. he's doing a bloody sold out run at the Edinburgh Fringe at the moment. I'm not sure we'll be he able is to now, get him. But this is the first week of November by the time peeps are listening to this. Yeah, true. So. And he is... That Halloween episode has done wonders for me knowing when these episodes are going to go out. <laughs> Yeah, it, I was so excited to record that. Um, anything else? So excited, you forgot to prep any content for this one. No, like, I, well, look, we could have kept on going, but after the structure and bonding of carbon, we get into something called quantitative chemistry, which is literally just doing maths about chemistry. So I thought, you know what, I'll save that for its own episode. Oh, good. Can't wait for that. Remind me to kill myself in two and a half weeks. So is there anything else you want to say about diamonds, Laura? <laughs> How much time's worth of stuff do you need me to say about diamonds? We've got like another two or three of these. <laughs> I've got a diamond ring. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> to describe. You could tell that fact again that you told last time we talked about diamonds, about them not actually being scarce. Do you want to do that? Oh, yeah, De Beers. That's about a minute, isn't it? De Beers just um, force force the market. Like, they've got loads, and then they just release a certain number of them to keep the price up. And, yeah. um, like, as as we've seen here, and chemically, they're, they're not rare. It's not like gold, where there's a, you know, a very sort of small, fine out amount of gold on the planet. They're just made out of carbon. We can make them ourselves. They're not rare. Yeah. And then also people being like, oh, I don't want, you know, a diamond that's been made in a lab. There's no reason why not. It's the same. Yep. There you go. Um, There's that. Did you know that apparently all of the gold in the world could fit in a cube underneath the Eiffel Tower? Really? Uh, Mr. Curran told me that in DT GCSE. Paul Curran. Yeah. Should we dox him? <laughs> I don't think it's doxing. We're not saying anything horrible or saying where he lives. He told us a couple of times that he was in the room when the crumb tray of the toaster, the modern toaster, was invented. I liked him. Yeah. Um, did you still call DT resistant materials when you did it? Resistant materials was one of them. There was G DT yeah. graphics, DT resistant materials in DT... Um, what was the other one? Textiles and cooking. No, those weren't DT when I was there. Mr. Heel did it. Um, I, oh, he wasn't there when I was there. He was a form tutor for my year. Um, anyway, so that's Diamond. Uh, Diamond! So now we're going to move on to something that you've probably heard of but may not know much about. Do you know what pencil lead is made out of, Laura? Graphite. Do you know what graphite's made out of, Laura? Carbon. Yup. Um, but graphite is a very, 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 very interesting molecule. So let me send you... Disclaimer. Interesting may mean different things to you and Ron. <laughs> uh, hey, the listeners the listeners back me up on, on the interesting. Um, okay, when that loads, tell the listener what you see. Right, I'm going back to the WhatsApp web. Yeah, Ron sent me another link. The WhatsApp web sent a WhatsApp web message. Oh, hello. Right, now I'm looking at... It's another of these, like, made-up of lattice things. But instead of it being a pyramid where everything's got four connected, this time there's layers. Uh, like a parfait or an onion. <laughs> to paraphrase a joke from Shrekles. Um, <laughs> Shrek's autobiography. <laughs> Stop it. 
these ones all have one, two, three, four, four. Oh, I hate counting things in a circle because you can't remember where you started. One, two, three, four. four. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hexagon. Six. They have six bonds between them. No, they don't. The hexagon is. The hexagon has no, six they... sides, but not the atoms don't oh, have six bonds between no. them. Oh no, that's blown my little ears off. <laughs> yes, everything still has four bonds, listener. No, it doesn't. Oh no. <laughs> 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 Everything has three bonds. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's because there's no up one. Where's the up bond gone? Whoa, you can scoot through the layers. Yeah. Whoa, it's like a time travel. Oh, my God, Ron, yesterday in the real world, um, not in podcast listening times, I went to a place in Sussex called Knock Hatch. It's a, I don't know. Sounds, zoo. Sounds weird. It was just a zoo, like kind of like Creeley, but for the South. Knock Hatch is a this. That's the kind of thing that Americans make up for British places. Well, it's actually a thing that British people made up for this British place, right? And I went there, and they had a Sherlock Holmes experience where you went in, and then you watched a little video where Sherlock said, did hey, loads of us? drugs. Uh, not not. F- not for the Sherlock Holmes experience, but just <laughs> coincidentally, I happened to be opiumed out of my toots. Um, sat down and watched a video where Sherlock Holmes said, hey, help me solve this thing. And then they said, hey, go through this door, right? They said, or, like, sort of intimated that it was just a curtain, right? And then they had these, like, massive inflatable walls that you had to force your way through like a birthing canal <laughs> to come out the other side with no indication of how long the birthing canal was or when you were going to be free again i've never ever been so upset in my life by <laughs> a, an experience that was ostensibly for children but i feel like they should have warned you that you were about to go through that is that not the is, issue right there if it's for children a, a child would slip right through but you were caught in the passage i don't think nephews were thrilled about it either to be perfect no it honest. sounds quite awful um, it was awful and then all we could think about was it's been so hot lately how many sweaty arms and faces have been pulped into that thing sun cream sweat other oozes just going all over it and then the next person basically comes through and wipes that all off onto themselves and leaves their own trail Ugh. Yeah, like human slugs um, then we went round it, right? And I didn't realise this, but there were bits that were, like, jumpy. So somebody got shot. I shat my pants. I screamed so loudly <laughs> at this gunshot going off. Oh, my God, I hate things that make me jump. Yeah, I hate to be scared. <laughs> You'd have hated it. You'd have absolutely done a crapola down your Legos. Yeah, I'm very jumpy. Um, mm, me too, buddy. Right. Anyway, what were we talking, so about? talking about? How did I get onto that? Oh, because I was zooming through yeah, the lattice. Um, yeah, so each carbon's got three connectors, and then the top connector that should make it into a lattice is just not there, guys. Yeah, and the, the lattices are completely flat, so they don't have the sort of, you know, triangle kind of base that... Um, They're actually proper lattices, not like a 3D full lattice that Ron likes to think is a lattice. Yeah. Um, so... What happens with graphite, right, Laura, um, is each carbon atom forms these three bonds. The last electron that would form a bond... The last electron. ...dissociates like what happens in metals when they do metallic bonding. Oh, so it, like, goes, mm, you three are a thing? I just don't think polyamory is for me, guys. I'm going to go over there and pretend I don't know you. Yeah, so... Um, instead of, like, in a metal, obviously, it's all of the positively charged nuclei of the... <gasps> Don't yawn when I'm talking <laughs> like that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm tired. I've had to get up at, like, normal people hours. All of the, um, all of the positively charged nuclei of the, of the, of the metal atoms are sort of in and amongst the negatively charged jam cement of the of the sad boys of the electrons right in graphite you have positively charged layers of this carbon lattice layers and then like a mana biscuit you have negatively charged sad boys in between holding them together what 
Could you say all that again? Because I was trying to remember how to spell disassociate. Yeah, so, wait, where do you, where do you need me to start? Go back to diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> no, just joking. Um, so, the, so three of them pair up and then one of them disassociates and gets... Gets in... Gets what happens then? What? So, in the same way as with a metal, you have all the positive... No, don't say in the same way as a metal, because I don't know what that means. Well, do you remember metallic bonding? You have all of... Let me explain it, then. (laughs) You have all of the positive... Well, don't ask if I remember it, then. You have all of the positively charged nuclei of the of the metal nu- is that po- is it's that the plural of nucleus i know i know don't answer that question because i didn't ask it <laughs> so you have um yeah you have all the positive charged nuclei um and then those are in a I like fancy. do you want an ice cream no Should i go and get an ice cream yeah, go on. I'll describe graphene. <laughs> you can get an ice cream. Um, yes, so... Oh my goodness, Mackie's asleep in her bed right now. She looks so cute. So the electrons dissociate and then those kind of jam together all of the positively charged uh, uh, nuclei, right? That's a metallic bond. You remember this? Hang on, let me take a picture of Mackie and then you can tell me again. I... Oh, she's so cute, Ron. Okay. Um, say it again. <laughs> do you remember what metallic bonding is? I said no. Okay, do you... Not even from the last two times when I said it in the last two minutes. I said I wasn't listening. Okay, right. Are you listening now? Oh, my God. We played drawing this week, Ron. Jesus Christ. Are you listening now? Yes. Okay. I drew an otter last night. It was bad. All of the el- the electrons dissociate, and then they exist in kind of a cement with the positively charged nuclei getting held together with the negatively charged electrons in between them, okay? Okay. Is that in metals or That's graphite? in metals. That's something right. that we covered at this point nigh on months ago. Mm. And then shut up. I heard it months, two hours ago. Instead of... But in graphite, instead of it being positively charged nuclei... Graphics! Graphite! Instead of it being positive... Is that what... (laughs) Shut up! (laughs) Graphs! Giraffes! It's positively charged sheets of... You haven't shouted shut up at me in a while, I don't think. (laughs) Shut up, shut up, shut up! <laughs> it's positively charged sheets of graphene. It's positively charged sheets. And then the dissociated Then the dissociated electrons hold them together. Okay? So same as a metal but just in in a milfoy. Yeah. And yeah, in mil in milfoy form and then the the layers are co those layers are covalently bonded into sheets, but there are no covalent bonds in between the sheets. Okay? No, okay. So this allows graphite to do a couple of things that are interesting. Firstly, a lot like metals, but a lot softer, um, the sheets can slide over each other, okay? Ooh. This is the whole reason why pencils work in the way that they do, because basically what you're doing is you're wiping off sheets of graphite onto the paper. Ah, that's magic. Yeah, and then sort of, so if you had like, if you, if you take like iron, for example, iron's got a lot of electrons that it dissociates um, mm-hmm. and then hold together all of the positively charged nucleuses. But in um, in graphite, it's only one electron that's getting dissociated per carbon, and then all of those carbons are quite spread out because of the covalent bonds between them. So the forces actually in between the layers are quite weak. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, and then this also, because it has these dissociated electrons, it can conduct electricity as well. Right. So you could, if you wanted to, pass a current through a pencil. Okay. Yeah. And that's graphite. 
Anything else you want to say about that? Hey, I changed... I had to fix the plug on my Hoover again the other day. Oh, yeah. And um, it uh, it doesn't have... It's only got two wires in it. Which one doesn't it have? Got a uh, blue one. So it's just got an earth wire and a live wire? Or well, maybe it doesn't have a... Maybe it didn't have a green and yellow one. I can't remember. But it So it's not getting have, earthed? It only had two wires in it. Is that safe? I don't know, mate. Ask James Dyson. No, actually don't. He didn't make it as a vax. So no, ask our dad before you die in a house fire. But there's only two wires in the whole thing. Yeah, that... Yeah. Is it not getting earthed, is my question. I don't know. I only bought it in 2015, so... Yeah. We knew about earthing then, so if it wasn't safe, they couldn't have sold it, could they? I mean, they could have, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's only got two wires. Well, there we go. Um, hey, and also, what's a fuse doing? It breaks if there's too much current. Cool, because I plugged the plug into the wall, right? And I saw a big spark in the plug, and then the hoover stopped working. So then I took it apart, and the fuse is sort of all blackened now. But it still works. Oh. So the next one... So what do you think, listeners? <laughs> should I get a new vacuum cleaner? Or should I just wait to die? If you die in a house fire because of this, I wonder if I'll release this episode. Yeah, I think you should, as evidence. <laughs> <laughs> do you mind if I do a wee, Ron? I need a wee. How long have we got on the clock? Um, excuse me. Uh, we've recorded for 28 minutes. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, go for a wee. We have to stretch out the last bits a bit. I think Mackie's missing Newton. Are they friends again? Oh, they love each other. Well, to be fair, he... Well, no, they do. They love each other. He is obsessed with snuffling her ears. <laughs> like, yesterday, she just had wet ears all day because he won't That's leave them alone. disgusting. <laughs> You'll witness it next week at Dad's birthday. I will. Oh, weirdly, by the time this comes out, Dad's actual birthday will be next week. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so we're throwing my dad a surprise 70th birthday party. The surprise being we're doing it three months before his actual birthday. So he won't guess. I don't know how he's going to feel about that. I don't know. I think he'll have fun. Yeah. He loves us and our company. He does, yeah. I don't know about all the other people we've invited, but we'll see. Well, okay, Ron. Um, graphite. Yeah, graphite. Hey, we should put a disclaimer on this episode that says, Disclaimer contains graphic imagery. Graphite imagery? Graphite descriptions. Yeah. Graph- graphite depictions of molecules. Um... So that's graphite. Yep. I understood it all. Anything else you want to say about it at all? Um, Is it poisonous? Students should be... um, It's not good for you. Students... Wait, when pencils were... Was it actually lead that was in pencils before graphite? Presumably. Well, how did that work? Is lead also in sheets? Yes. You don't know that. No, all metals are in sheets. That's how they're. That's how you can like bend them and and work them into shapes. Oh, so they're all softy, softy layers. Well, yeah. Do you remember when it's we talked about um, metals before? We were talking about how the sheets slide over each other, and then that's why alloys are stronger because some of the atoms are bigger and smaller, and then that stops the layers from sliding. Uh, yeah. Well, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> so you could write down stuff with a lead, but then I guess people kept sucking on lead pencils and dying, so they changed yeah, it to graphite. Yeah, and lead's graphite. expensive. Lead is expensive. Yeah. Okay, PB. Students should be able to explain the properties of graphite in terms of its structure and bonding. Students should know that graphite is similar to metals in that it has delocalized electrons. Here's a fun thing. On the GCSE syllabus, there's this whole column of the two-column table that it's made out of. I have no idea what that column means. It says, Key Opportunities for Skills Development, WS 1.2. I have no idea what that means. 
Why don't we make a pact that if neither of us understand it, we pretend it's not happening? Yeah, okay. All right, let's move on to the next bit. All right. Let me WhatsApp you. Oh, no, I've lost the thing there. Okay, right, look, keep, keep, on, keep on looking at your graphite bit, right? Now imagine there was only one sheet of it. That molecule is called graphene, and its properties make it very useful in electronics. Okay? okay. What's Mackie angry at? I don't know. I can't really hear what's going on in the outside world because I've got headphones on. But she just jumped out of bed and had a growl and scurried out hmm. the door. It's probably a child being happy yeah, nearby. Probably. So graphene, single layer, has properties that makes it useful in electronics because it can conduct electricity, but then also, you know, it's uh, malleable because it's made out of uh, it's this carbon, right? Now, mm. imagine... So wait, what's happened with the atoms then, that it's all gone in a line instead of lots of layers? You mean for graphene? Or has someone just sliced off... I don't really know how it's made, um, but it's a man-made thing, so we've we've done stuff to it. Yeah. Okay. Now, graphene obviously is a sheet of carbon in this form, but you, yeah. c- uh, well, scientists, can then make structures out of this. Don't change from you to scientists. Well, you don't know how to do this. Well, you have neither it, do we- all scientists. No, but some of them do. None of you do. Some people listening might. Yeah, but I was, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Look, Laura, you have it within yourself. I'm sure if you applied yourself and, you know, redid some life choices, then you could have been here making Buckminster Fullerenes, but you're not. Buckminster Fullerenes? Yes. So, right, imagine (laughs) taking a sheet of graphene, as we've just described. Yeah. And then making this out of it. I've sent you another picture. Okay. Go to the WhatsApp web. Ding, ding. Clicking. A 3D model. Oh, you've made a big circle ball. A sphere, yes. (laughs) What some people (laughs) might call a circle ball. (laughs) So this Oh, that looks like... Do you remember that toy we had as little kids that was blue on one side and red on the other side? And it had yellow shapes and lots of holes cut out into it and you had to put the right shape through the right thing and then you pulled the sides of the ball and it came apart and all the shapes fell back out again. No, you've asked me about this before and I still don't remember it. No. Well, I remember it. Did anybody else have one of those? Get in touch. LexEducation at gmail.com. Yeah. Now, this is called a Buckminster Fullerene, okay? Yeah. Um, it's a ball of carbon. It's a circle ball, a sphere a of carbon. A circle ball of carbon. Now, you might notice it's not exactly the same as graphene because it has some hexagons and some pentagons. Oh, I in noticed it. that. Don't think I didn't notice that. A yeah. Buckminster, what was it called? Figurine. Fullerene. Fullerene. Buckminster. Yeah, Buckminster Fuller was the guy that um, discovered these. What a these. name! Yeah. So wait, that one's a hex and that one's a pent. You're right, Ron. Yeah, fullerenes are molecules of carbon atoms with hollow shapes. The I zoomed out too far and I've lost it. The structure of fullerenes is based on hexagonal rings of carbon atoms, but they may also contain rings with five or seven carbon atoms. The first fullerene to be discovered was Buckminster fullerene, which has a spherical shape. I've lost it, Ron. Refresh the page. It's back. You're so smart. Um, I'm going to refuse the cookies on this page. <laughs> That's fair. I wouldn't want anyone to know what nerdy shit you've been looking at. Um, it's a C60 fullerene. Yeah, because there's 60 carbons it in it, It was made probably. by E. Cavalli. Thanks, E. Cavalli. Yep, it has a cage-like fused ring structure. Truncated isocahedron. Icosahedron. That resembles a soccer ball. Made of 20 hexagons and 12 pentagons. And 12 pentagons. Published nine months ago. (laughs) Science and technology 3D molecules. Summit. Salunque. Moriplogo. Filmato 12 and one other like this model. You must log in to comment. I haven't got time. (laughs) Sketchfab.com. I simply can't. So that's um, Fullerene's thoughts, feelings, concepts. What was the what? Why did they make that? What for? Look at it. <laughs> what would, what would that look like in the real world if you had a load of those enough to make up a pile of <sighs> Buckminsters? Bubble tea, I, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> 
What are fullerenes used for? They're active molecules. Fullerene molecule can be used as an antioxidant because it can easily react with radicals due to the high affinity of the electron. So it Fullerene can be used to is, detox things. Yep, it's used as anti-aging and anti-damage agent in the cosmetic sector. Ooh, I might can have put used fullerenes viral, on my skin. I think basically, right, let me, let me send you the last one um, because I know that fullerenes and what I'm about to send you, they get combined together quite a lot. Okay. So take a look at that. You'd have heard of these as well. Oh, I hope it's boys' own. Whoa! What am I looking at here? I'm looking at a tube now. A tube. Yeah. So this is a carbon nanotube. Okay. Which you may have heard of. Now, the buns look different here. Is this just a different type of animation? Yeah, it's just someone else has made it. Um, uh, but It was Juan G3D. You will notice that um, it's a bit like graphene again in the fact that they, um, they're they all hexagons. However, yeah. um, I think in I've this... I've noticed that it's got quite unusual properties that could be valuable for like nanotechnology, electronics, optics, or or maybe some other fields of material science and technology. Yeah. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah. Um, uh, print your own nanotube. <laughs> Exclamation mark. Yeah, so basically, um, the properties that um, make them super useful is that they can be super, super... It's a very strong thing to make stuff out of because of the... Like, cil a, a cylinder inherently is just kind of a very strong shape. Um, and then it's also kind of like... You know, obviously, diamonds are super strong because they um, have all these covalent bonds. Mm -hmm. There's so do carbon nanotubes. Obviously, it's not quite the same as a diamond because it's in a slightly different structure. But... Um, that same sort of inherent strength of covalent, you know, large covalent bonds. And then obviously you can make them as, as big or as small as you want, really. So they're a very, very useful material. Are the disassociated ones in the middle of the tube, like a cannoli? I'm, I'm not sure where they... Um, carbon nanotubes disassociated... That's a good question. Electrons. I'm full of good questions. I think they probably... Um, I don't think they'd go in the middle of the tube. They probably just dissociate, but then in the same way that, like you know, like with metals, they probably just hang around the sheet and then can travel up and down it as the electric current is applied to it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and then what you can do is, like, they can combine, like, a carbon nanotube with a Buckminster fullerene and, like, put an end cap on it and stuff like that, and you can build quite complex structures out of them. So you could fill the tube with balls? You could fill it with very small molecules, probably. Wow, okay. But if you made yeah. a big enough nanotube, you could put fullerenes inside the nanotube. I guess, yeah. No reason why not. Yeah, um, and yeah, and that's, that's all it wants us to know about carbon nanotubes, really. Ron, I don't think there's any more to know. It's not, that, it's not that that's all they want us to know, it's that we've learned it all. Yeah, I don't see how anyone could know anything more about anything, really, than we know about different ways you can bond carbon today. Yeah, I don't even see how you're going to make a quiz, but you're going to. Maybe I won't. <laughs> Just no quiz this episode. <laughs> I think if the listeners deserve anything, it's it's some content. Yeah. So yeah. See you next week for the quiz. I guess. <laughs> it's very noisy. Yeah. Is that like a street cleaner going past or something? I'll close the window for the quiz. Yeah, it will past. Okay. Do, 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 quiz me, Ron. This surely will be the easiest quiz in the whole of the whole of the world because we hardly did any content and actually it wasn't my fault this time. <laughs> yeah, we, I think we covered like three things last time. <laughs> it was like, it was the equivalent of end of term lesson, wasn't it? Where you're just like, oh, there's some bits, but don't worry about them. They they came up in last year's GCSE, so they probably won't come up in this year's. 
Should we, um, like, just before Christmas, should we do an episode where we just, like, watch The Boy in Striped Pyjamas or something and just, like... Well, not The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas. That sounds really depressing. Yeah, I had to Christmas watch that once episode. at school. What? As a, like, end-of-year treat? Yeah. Oh, that's mad. We always used to watch Mr Bean. Mr no, Street I... in Geography. He was obsessed with Mr Bean. I watched um, Boy in Striped Pyjamas. I watched Avatar once. Oh. Yeah. Bleak. Man, I'm glad. I'm really glad then that I was at school when teachers had one VHS tape and there was no <laughs> access to any other form of entertainment. It was Mr. Bean every year. That's what we did. But may, yeah, maybe we should do that for the Christmas episode. <laughs> that would be quite funny. <laughs> it's just doing some crafts and watching a film together. Yeah. Um, All right. I'm in. Cool. Right. You ready for the chemistry quiz, though? Yeah, was it chemistry? Yeah, I mean... It was. I've sold carbonzo beans. That's what I've written down. Okay, um, are you... Uh, so five marks on offer here. A simple mm-hmm. five. Um, the first one, kind of a revision question. What type of structure is diamond? What do you mean, what type of structure? What type of structure is diamond? Ah. <laughs> uh... Oh, well, uh, bloody hell. Why are your questions never the stuff I've written down? Uh, a lattice? Uh, it, it, the the shape is a lattice, but I mean, like, how is it bonded? That that sort of... Oh, um... Oh, yeah. Hang on. That was in a different lesson, wasn't it? Diamond is... Ionic? No, it's a Coving, giant molecular. Coving. That's not even correct. It's a giant molecular molecular structure. Oh, giant molecular diamonds. Okay, no, didn't know that. God, just... you're a bad teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Do you write this stuff down as well? I've just gotten a WhatsApp off Mum saying, "Just found your Christmas present." Um, two Leo Sayer lips and Gilbert O'Sullivan angel emoji. LPs? Is she trying to say LPs, not lips? Oh! <laughs> Who the fuck's <laughs> Gilbert O'Sullivan? <laughs> Gilbert O'Sullivan. I don't know. You Google it. I need to go and let the dog out. She's dinged her bell. Two seconds. Oh, for some reason I thought that was a sound effect on the podcast. Laura can't hear me. She's walked away. I'm going to say that again when she gets back, as if she never left. Mm, I'm not good at vamping. For some reason, I thought that ding was one of the sound effects from the podcast. (laughs) No, that's my stupid dog wanting to go and bark at people outside. I've decided to let her. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you decided that years ago. (laughs) No, we've been spraying her with a water bottle when she barks at children. Oh. Yeah, she hates it. Yeah, because it makes her a bit cleaner. (laughs) She does love to be a little fishy, pissy mess. I love that dog. Right, why is graphite soft? Oh, it's in layers, like a milfoy. It's It's a pastry metal, so it's got... It's got bonds... And then it's got disassociated electrons between the layers. Yes, very good. And crucially, no... Animosity? Bonds. Bonds. No bonds, Macarena. No bonds between the layers. I know that. I said that. They've got disassociated ones between the layers. Yeah, I was just trying to coax that out of you, but I'm giving you the mark! I don't shout at me then. Well, don't. I was just trying to help. <laughs> well, sometimes I read people helping me as offensive. <laughs> so, why does graphite conduct electricity, Laura? Because of the disassociated electrons, they can jog about and jog their charge on. Very nice, very nice. What is graphene? Um. Yeah, I remember that word. Is it? Um. Is it a Buckminster? <laughs> No, graphene is just one sheet of graphite. Oh, okay, okay. I'll write that down. (laughs) (laughs) 
No, I'd forgotten that. In a big way of a graphite. And finally, ran out of steam a bit with this because carbon's <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> True or false? Is this a trick question like what is the SI temperature of carbon? Uh, yeah, I think it is pretty cool. Well, actually, no, it's not cool, is it? It's very uptight, I think, carbon. It's grabbing everything and holding on. Carbon likes it toit formation. But maybe that's what You need to cool go spray it. Mackie with a water bottle. <laughs> yeah, she's losing her mind out there, isn't she? Woo! Yeah, carbon is pretty cool. That's the correct mark. Yes! No, and it, not, not a tricko answer. Just... It's pretty cool. I like it when they're not trickos. All right, that was pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah, three out of five. Scraping a passing mark. Yes. Ron, listening back to that, how do you feel about your behaviour? Like a cool surfer dude. (laughs) Uh, It had a real end of term vibe, that lesson, didn't it? Like, Mm -mm. mm, well, it kind of was the end. It wasn't the end of term. It was the end of a subject. And sometimes in this um, this uh, this this format, I am faced with like the you know, do I want to sort of latch on this last bit of carbon bonding to just some maths, and then just have this really weird disjointed episode? And I think we can all agree that you know, winding the window down and just you know, you know, opening that sunroof and just coast along, bro. Put on your board shorts. Listening to Cheryl Crow. The coolest band that there is. <laughs> um, I've got a question for you, Ron, which when I was listening to, to it back, I kept thinking, surely I asked this. Surely I asked this. And then I never did. Um, when we're talking about graphite and graphene and stuff, when graphite's in a pencil, when a pencil's like HB or 2B or 4B... What is the difference in the graphite in that? Um, softness. What, what do you mean softness? Well, you know what the, the H and the B and stuff stand for? No. HB stands hard for... Hard and boffed. <laughs> no, hard and black. Ah. So 2B is like too black, more black. And then you can have, you can, I think you can get pencils that are like 2H and they're just really hard. Um, Why would you want that? For like softer, they're like lines and, you know. So what's the difference in the carbon, in, in the carbon arrangements in that? Well, I don't actually know where pencil graphite comes from, but like I, they're not making it in a lab. Like this stuff's not going to be pure carbon. So they're probably mining it out of the ground somewhere and it'll have different shit in it. Ah, uh, okay, so mixing it with other things. Well, if you've got any more pencil knowledge than that, listeners, let us know what's up with pencils. What's your what's favorite up with kind pencils? of pencil? And why is it one of those ones where you push a thing in the end and then a thing <gasps> comes out the I other end? I hate those. They make me really angry because, one, a pencil doesn't need to be plastic. Two, they're never any good. You can only ever use them for about a week and then the whole thing breaks and a spring comes out that you're like, why was there even a spring in there? Yeah, this was before we knew about plastic, though. Yeah, that's true. I bet they still make them. Architects. The heady days of the 90s. What a brilliant time to be alive. Um, so there you go. We hope you enjoyed chemistry. Oh, Every time we say goodbye for a chemistry episode, we know there's just a week of fear about the upcoming physics. Mm-hmm. But hey, it's sitting there on the horizon, less than a week away. Yes, it is. Physics is the third one that we do. Why did you look at me like that? I just, I, we're having a conversation, so it can't just always be me talking. Yeah, I do feel, I feel that way as well. <laughs> right, have a lovely week, everyone. Thank you for all your love and brilliance. We love you. See you next week. Bye. Gl- glass dismissed. Gla- glass. <laughs> Why did you make a glut noise? Oh, because I was so keen to do it, because I know that all of these chumps are putting uh, Ron DeLaze's catchphrase on their (laughs) um, bingo cards, so... (laughs) Gotcha. Uh.